Well, hello there. It's Heather, and I am here with a special video for you. Earlier this week, I had the fun opportunity to talk to Diane from Holiday Vacations, the company that handles our craftlet tours. And we have a tour coming up in May, from May 20th to May 30th, 2024. And we have a couple of seats left. So, you have been watching a bunch of pictures from previous craftlet tours. So much fun. And now, you'll get a chance to hear Diane and me talk a little bit about what's coming up on our trip to Denmark and Sweden. Here we go. So, hello, Diane from Holiday Vacation. Hello, Heather from Craftland. How are you? I'm good. It's so nice to see you, actually. It's nice to see you as well and actually see each other. Yes, because mm -hmm. now I am dressed and have makeup on instead of when we usually try talking when I don't and I don't. And, yeah. and ain't nobody needs to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it is it is truly a treat to get to to get to see you. Yay! Yay! Yes. And uh I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some travel plans that we have coming up. Yes, Denmark and Sweden. Aren't you excited? I am so excited. And this is this is uh this is one of those things like I've been waiting for kinds of things. We're getting continental. This year it's continental. But the, the one of the things that I was thinking would be kind of fun to talk about is I have my memory of of how this all started back in 2009. Whatever book we were doing made me think, oh, we should be traveling to these places. And I kind of put out a general call for if you are a travel yeah. agent yeah, person. Yeah, what I heard, what, yeah. yeah, because I, I was a listener. That's how Heather and I got started I was a listener and she said anybody oh excuse me anybody out there works in the travel industry um could you give me a contact could you contact me send me an email and that's how we got started and our first trip was in 2010 with London Bath and Wales heavily influenced in Wales with things that um Brenda Dane had on her cast on podcast so we went to the wool museum and the wool mill woolen mill and a lot of and cool the Hay on Y, the the town with all the bookstores that mm -hmm. that was wonderful, uh, stunning. Yes. And Tintern Abbey, Tintern some of my Abbey. best photographs ever came from Tintern Abbey. Uh huh. And we went to Dylan Thomas's um the boathouse, the boathouse. Yeah, yes. it was stunning. And yeah. all those beautifully colored buildings, so beautiful. Tenby. Tenby. And you remember that's where we met Peter French. <gasps> Peter. Peter's a low dad died who he's now retired. Um, he's well into his 80s and he misses us desperately. But I miss him too. Yes. He so. he I I found in one of my sketchbooks from 2010, I mm -hmm. found my sketch of a roundabout. And labeled it the Bosky Wood the Bosky because we Wood. got stuck going around that roundabout several times, and that was, you know, he's like all of the we badge and and uh, other guides from in other countries. They have the restrictions about who gets to talk on the microphone and and who gets to do the touring. Um, Peter was my introduction to those people, and so he he has always had a, a huge big. Mm -hmm. place in my yeah. heart but I especially appreciated his his constant ability which is a secret superpower that you have too of taking a moment when things are maybe not going so well and turning it into a positive or mm -hmm. at least making something funny about it and mm -hmm. keeping it all light not not ignoring the fact that we had gotten stuck going around a roundabout six or seven times but mm -hmm making it part of the story and right. since craftlet people are all story people it mm -hmm. always seems to to work out to our benefit in the long run Absolutely. but that's that's one of the things that i love about traveling with you and with craftlet people is that the the intersection between bookish people and maker crafter people is a great 
intersection. We have Mm -hmm. fabulous people who go on these trips with us. Mm -hmm. Well, and even my sister-in-law, Jill, has been on every single craftlet trip, even though she's not crafty at all, but she loves to read. In fact, I think if she touched a needle, she'd break up in hives. Um, But she continues to travel on the tours because she loves the people who travel. Everybody's very welcoming. And she said the dinner conversation is always very interesting and, and, and just fabulous people who travel. And our core group is so welcoming that regular holiday vacations, people have come on our tours and felt very included and became friends with everybody else as well. Yeah, no, we, we have, it does sound like oh, this is a group of people who've traveled together several times over the last 12, oh my God, what year is it? 24, 12, last 14 years. 14 years. <laughs> it feels like that is a recipe for clickishness. And I that is just not a vibe that I get from our, our people. Everybody sits in different places on the bus every day, you know, wherever, wherever we're traveling to on the coach. People kind of rotate around so they can talk to different people. There's also the thing that I love about our people, like if you just need to take a nap as we're traveling, that's fine too. Nobody is going to force you into a conversation or like make you feel bad because you didn't sleep well the night before and wanted to catch right. a few Z's before we get to the next place. I love that about our people, that there's mm-hmm. no like enforced fun time. That's not, that is not us. Mm-mm. Did you want to talk it. about if somebody wants to travel by themselves and are they going to feel all alone or not included? Oh, well, that's true. Uh, we do have a number of people who do travel as singles. Yeah. And, um, and pretty typically, and they're very happy to do so. And I've always felt included. And so you don't have to worry about, am I going to have to eat dinner by myself? Oh gosh, or no. That ever. Kind of thing. Yeah, no, we even we on the have... non-included things. Yeah, no, absolutely. I I remember thinking um, how perfect the the group is in that everybody is like equal parts extrovert and introvert. Like everybody sitting down at a table with each other is happy to chat and enjoy and learn and ask questions and find out all sorts of interesting stuff about each other and also perfectly happy to sit on the bus quietly after seeing something really wonderful and just kind of letting it all sink in and write in a notebook or knit for a little while that there's there's no way you can feel alone on one of your trips or lonely and And that to me, especially if you're traveling by yourself is kind of huge because it Mm -hmm. could be very, very challenging, I think, to to travel and feel like, oh, everybody else already knows each other and Mm -hmm. I'm the odd man out. And I just don't see that happening on our trip. It hasn't hasn't really happened at all. No. And and we also have had a track record uh, because of you uh, collecting tidbits about people and all of us kind of learning little bits and pieces that we've done things like stopping at bridges specifically in Scotland so that Candy, who is an architect, can go out and take pictures of the bridge. And that's just what we do because we know each other and we hear what other people are interested in and and it all just kind of falls into the mix. She about fainted during the Sun River cruise when we were going under all those different kinds of bridges. She was just She she was in bridge geek heaven. (laughs) She was. It was ultra bridge geek heaven. Yes, it was Mm -hmm. true. That was such. That was such a happy thing. That Mm -hmm. just made me grin. And Mm -hmm. and similarly with not feeling isolated and alone. When we did Scotland, that was Aaron's 18th birthday present. Uh, That's thing one to people who've been listening forever. Um, I think Aaron at first, it it probably did cross his mind that perhaps this was going to be a little awkward for him being 18 and traveling with a bunch of adults and he's not a knitter I mean he's a creator but it's all digital um and not only was it not an issue it has been so much fun to hear hear Scotland 
stories pop up as he's talking, just happy memories that pop up like monthly, something gets said about how much, how much fun he had and how awesome everybody is. And in fact, on Thursday night Zooms, when he's been home and Candy's been on every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, do you want to pop down and say hi? Candy's on. And Aaron will come and stick his head in and say, <laughs> which all Very makes me cool. happy. Yeah. Yes. We have good people. We collect we good people. We can use more good people. Yeah, there is could, room for more good do. people. So do, if you're interested, do join us because it's just a wonderful time yeah. and you'll make memories that will last forever, regardless of if you're 25 or 85 or anywhere yep. in between. Anywhere in between. <laughs> it's so true. Um, now, on some tours in the past, we've spent several multiple nights. Now, this tour, we're moving around a lot more because... Um, there was just too much good stuff. So much good and, stuff. And um, so we've got a lot of one night stays on this, but we're seeing some pretty fabulous things. At the end of the tour, we do have a three night stay in Stockholm with a full free day though. So that nice. people, craftlet people want at least one day where they can go out and do whatever they want because everybody has varied interests. Yeah. And, um, we're doing a lot, a lot of cool stuff on this tour Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We really, really are. And the um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure we talked about, because it's not in the brochure, is the, this, for me, the secret sauce to all of these trips is you. Because you have been to all of these places, you've seen all of these things, and you've kind of scoped out like, ah, this is a place that Craftlet people would like, put that on the list. Mm -hmm. And then you, you build the tour out of that list, but you also, because you are our people, you also know about things like knitting stores and fabric stores, and you have, you have made it possible for us to go and visit, um, on our, our days off when we have free time, there's always something like, and if you're interested in seeing this thing, here's how we're going to do it. And there's mm -hmm. something something like that in in Copenhagen. Oh, in Copenhagen, um, there's the store Knitting for Olive that um, recently has been in the news a lot. And it's, I mean, like internet news. Um, and they've been recently interviewed on the Fruity Knitting podcast. And they're, they've recently published a book. So they're kind of out there right oh, cool. now. A lot of people, there's a lot of buzz about them. Um, when we stay in Copenhagen, usually I like to get us in the heart of the city so people can easily get out and get around. Um, we had some difficulties with hotels this year. In fact, our first date that we chose, we got, um, we got swift, swifted, we got swifted because Taylor Swift had a concert in Stockholm and we had to backpedal and find other dates because we couldn't wah, get wah. In Stockholm. Wow. But, um, uh, so we're staying out by the airport this time in Copenhagen. However, I'm going to find out ways that people who want to get down to Knitting for Olive on the arrival day when we do have the most amount of free time in Copenhagen can get right. down there, that kind of thing. And if you're signing up and you have other interests, just make sure you let me know and we'll figure out how we can fit it in for you. Um, yeah. But these things aren't put in the itinerary and aren't in the brochure because not everybody's interested in that stuff. Yeah. But I, I do have an awareness of certain things that certain people are going to probably be looking for. And that, that has gone for um, non crafty companions as well. Like mm -hmm. when we, was it when we were in York, there was the recent excavation Mm -hmm. um, they found the Viking ship and you had information. So I know there were a couple of couples who went to do that. And mm -hmm. that, that was something that had just recently happened. It wasn't even, it couldn't have been in the brochure. And um, right. you just always seem to have your ear to the ground on like, where's the cool stuff. And, mm -hmm. I and you, you know, our people well enough that, um, that I, do, I don't think you have missed anything ever that somebody oh. might have wanted to do 
from pulling a pint at Guinness to going to Pindaren, the Welsh whiskey distillery, which I'm still following on Facebook and I'm so excited because they're doing so well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, we, I like to have a big mix. Um, I like to have open air folk, folk museums that are very, love those, um, very um, authentic in how they depict things. So we've got the Gamla Linkoping open air museum, um, like three quarters of the way through this tour, which is a village where they've brought, you know, all old buildings in, created a village, and then they have costumed interpretive guides. We're going I to be that. visiting another one in Odense. Um, the day that we go to do all of the um, Hans Christian Andersen stuff, the day after we get to Copenhagen, we're going to spend a whole day in Odense. I know I'm not saying it right, so if you speak Danish, please forgive me. Um, when we're there, we're going to do a paper cutting um, workshop. And cool. uh, some people might not know this, but if you Google Hans Christian Andersen, you will see very intricate um, paper cuttings that he used to do to depict his fairy tales. Ours won't be that intricate. We're going to have just a taste of it, but I thought it would be fun to try. Um, and uh, we're going to, of course, have a city tour when we're in um, Copenhagen and see um, the Black Diamond, which is part of the Royal Danish Library, and it's where there's a Gutenberg Bible. Um, I'm so, so looking forward to that. I know, just cool stuff that while you're there, you know, once in a lifetime, let's go see it. And it's it's called the Black Diamond, not because it's like a crown jewel thing, but because the architecture is mm -hmm. ste like steel and glass. So it's a very mm -hmm. modern building that is black, black reflective glass or something. I saw pictures of it online and it was really cool. I know. Um, I love and that. we're not spending tons of time in Copenhagen. So if you do sign up and then we're going to be on the move, we're visiting um, a textile museum in Boras. We're going to um, uh, going to a the the Bohus Land Museum, which the actual Bohus, the woman who's not now working with Bohus, she's not going to be able to come that day. But we should be able to see some examples of Bohus sweaters as well as. Um, other things from that area. It's not a museum, just on the boho sweaters. Um, we're going to an art gallery. Um, the Swedes okay. are known for their art glass. We're going to be seeing the Costa Art Gallery and see a glass blowing demonstration. Um, we're going to go to the Pippi Longstocking birthplace. I'm so, so excited about that. Fun. I we're, thought Pippi was going to be in the public domain by now, and it's not because the translation oh, isn't. I know. Shoot. So Astrid Lindgren's, Astrid Lindgren's childhood home, we're going there. Um, uh, what, during our time in um, Co uh, Stockholm, of course, we're going to go see um, the Viking Ship Museum. Um, but we're also going to do a Swedish archipelago cruise. So there's these series of islands and we're going to have a lunch cruise of the Swedish archipelago. Um, I love, I love how you always manage to find some way to get me on the water. Cause that is not uh, going to be the only time since it's a maritime country, we're going to take a ferry, um, to get to Helsingborg and go see the, the castle that Shakespeare um, based um, Hamlet on. Hamlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll have to get thing too and need to uh, memorize some Hamlet. It may be. We did maybe the Hamlet. We had the group do some Shakespeare Hamlet by the ancient oak in Mac the woods. Macbeth. We, yeah. Macbeth. Macbeth. We did, we did a little, a little witchy stuff. Yep, yep. So that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. I, I am very excited to see uh, the inspiration for Elsinore Castle in, in Hamlet. That That is a castle that, as a theater person, finding out that it was real was a big deal. And then you started to kind of gradually start to see more and more pictures of it within the theater world. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of those places that I've always thought, oh, that would be so cool to get to go to. And now I get to go. 
Ta-da! Thank you. Ta yes, you're welcome. So we're very, we're both very excited about. Is there something in particular that you're really uh, excited about going to see, Heather? I think the there's so it's so hard to choose from. Um, I think the thing where for me the the history that I know and the craftiness that I love really and the honestly and the political science of the whole thing that I'm really looking forward to is getting to see where boho sticking started. And in fact, I found my glacial gauntlets. Very cool. So these were uh, inspired by a trip that you did not run and I wish you had called Sea Socks. These oh. were the colors of the glaciers that, I, that we could see in the glaciers that had calved and that were drifting by us. And, and I came home and it was right at the time when people were starting to really talk on the internet about Kool-Aid dyeing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is all 100% Kool-Aid dye. And I found my original mini skeins with oh, my notes cool. on them. Like this is uh, one berry blue and a half grape. Okay. That, that got that color. But then look at this red. This is the most saturated, amazing red, and that's three strawberries. Oh my so goodness. So I am going to uh, cool. raffle off the yarn that's required to make oh, this to pattern. Oh, to make some gauntlets. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, because I still have, I have enough that I can, I can gift it to somebody. Very cool. Very cool. Which, which by the way, makes me think we should probably mention the, the tacky Oh my God, the game. Well, yes. sometimes when I tour direct, I play a game called the Tackiest Souvenir and the craft lit people have just glommed onto this <sighs> and I am not allowed to run a craft lit tour without the Tacky Souvenir Contest anymore. So we set it up the first day or so saying that everybody is to be looking for Tacky Souvenirs. They don't need to be expensive. Um, do not tell or share anybody what you found and purchased. And then at some time toward the end of the tour, usually it's at the farewell dinner or someplace that it works well. Everybody's supposed to give me their tacky souvenirs without their names on them. I hold them up, talk about each one. Um, Heather and I pick the top three and then by applause, the group picks the winner and there is a fabulous prize for the winner. Um, and it, it, this is now, I'm not allowed not to do no. this game anymore. It's the only game we play. So don't think it's, you know, this whole thing gets real gamey. Yeah, it's not game central. Uh, it's not game good. central, but this is what now has become tradition for the Craftlet group. And oh, yeah. I must do it or there would be a peasant's revolt. That is so accurately mm -hmm. put. And, mm -hmm. and when we say tacky, we have seen truly tacky. There have been oh. songs and mm -hmm. things with flags on them. And London, there was a condom that said Big Ben on it. That's right. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, so truly, truly tacky stuff. Truly tacky. And it's amazing what people can find. I am yes. I am always blown away by, yeah. by the eagle eyes of our... <laughs> <laughs> of our people <laughs> and you get your tacky item back because i don't want a whole bag of tacky gift so you didn't need the works. big ben condom oh diane no should we talk about the date on <laughs> i was just gonna say why don't you um give us a, a picture of how this process goes like okay. finding, finding the information seeing the dates figuring out okay. how to sign up all righty um if you're interested um, and it doesn't really cost anything to hold a space. We're going to be coming to the point in February very soon that the final payment is due and we'll be um, uh, determining our final numbers. And then after that point, and I'll be, oh, the final payment is due February 15th. So again, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Perfect. Day. Um, so um, the dates are May 20th to the 30th, and that includes your night flying over to Copenhagen in the beginning. 
Right. Um, the price per person based on two people sharing a room, and that includes your airfare, all your hotel accommodations, all the sightseeing. You've got quite a few meals included as well. And all the craft lit fun <laughs> is right. $199 per person. Um, there are special rates for somebody if they want to have a room all by themselves. Um, it's just a $200 per person deposit to hold your space. And that's completely refundable until the final payment date of February 15th. But I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen okay. and show you because our phones are super busy right now, how to make a reservation online yourself, how to find the brochure and the information. And then if you make a reservation online, then somebody will call you back. You make an appointment for somebody to call you back and get your credit card. So I'm going to go ahead awesome. and yeah. share my screen. One moment. And um, are you seeing, Heather, my Google screen? I sure am. Okay, fantastic. So um, what you do is you go to www.holidayvacations.com. And there we are. We go to local station keyword. Um, Holiday Vacations works pretty extensively with TV stations across the country. And you type in Heather's keyword, which is Craftlet, and hit search or enter. And then you will find Heather's picture and the information about the tours. It talks about how days, 11 days from May 20th to the 30th. Now it says call to book, but we've got a different way. So you click on view tour. And you've got all these different things that you can click on. There's just, there's a quick little travel show you can click on. And Heather and I okay. are going to be doing an interactive travel show on the 25th as well. Um, but you need to get a an invite for that, um, which if you, I'll find out how that can happen. Yeah, uh, we can put that into the, the, mm -hmm. the show notes. Mm -hmm. So it lists the hotel accommodations. All of the attractions, look at this list, it's just huge. And on. that there's 16 meals included. Um, so all this stuff is included in the price. And then if you want to go to, again, see the dates and the pricing and the full day-by-day -day itinerary, that's all right there. If you want to see the tour map. I love the map. That shows where we're all going. So you can see we're doing a little bit of Denmark and then we're doing a whole lot of Sweden. And then um, if you were making a reservation, tour dates and pricing, you click here to click to view uh, pricing. I get it. And then if you want to make a reservation without calling the 800 number and being put on hold, you click on request booking now. And then you've got these questions to fill in. So it's very simple. You um, click on the questions for how did you hear about this tour? Um, it doesn't give you the chance. Social media or? I would go for social media. And then, you know, if you've got any special requests, like if you, now in Europe, you can't always get a non-tub shower, but if that is your preference, you can click the boxes for what you need and special requests for like, if you have, say you have a gluten-free diet, which okay. over in Europe right now is very easy to do. The number of people in your party, your name should be the name as it appears on your passport. And you can fill all these things in. And then um, you click, I am not a robot, and hit submit. And that will hold spaces for you on the tour. And then somebody will call you back to get your credit card number. Now, it won't be right away. Um, it might be in a couple of days. But you can relax knowing that you've got spaces held for you on the tour. So I'm going to do a stop share. Do you think that helps, Heather? 
Yes, hugely. And I'll tell you, one of the one of the main things that it helped me with was I wouldn't have figured out to click on the bar that says uh, that said pricing, that one that turned red when you clicked on it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have noticed that that's what that was if you hadn't shown me. And also the um, station slash keyword. I am, uh, I guess, a horrible reader. I always just read station and I don't notice the word keyword. So getting to see someone do it, it, I find super helpful. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. So that's the easy way to get a reservation. Um, if um, you've got real specific questions, the tour sales consultants don't know all the nickly little details for the tour, excuse me, for the tour. So I do have a direct dial number that you can call. And this is very secret. Not everybody gets this. So it's 715-830-4324. Um, if I'm not right in my office, when you call, I will call you back and believe me, you'll get a hold of me. I can't make a reservation. I can't take your payment because they switched everything around after the pandemic and upgraded all of our technology. And there's only certain things I'm allowed to do now, but right. you've got real specific info questions about like the hotels or what we're seeing or any of that. Or if you want to know if you're going to be able to get to see X, Y, Z during the tour and it's not in the brochure, do give me a call. And I'm very, very happy to answer your questions. That's so awesome. You're so awesome. Well, I love so this. Anything else, Heather, that we think we want to talk about? Uh, no. Thank you so much, Diane, okay. for taking the time to, to show me how to do the, the sign up to find find the places where I need to go to do the sign up and and uh, what to click on. That's yes. hugely helpful. That's great. Okay. And if anybody is just even interested, but they're not sure, you can call me again. And that was 715-830-4324. You are so good to us. Thank All you. All right. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good. See ya. Bye. Bye.